Hey everyone, Pastor Brad here. We know it's been a puzzling situation so far this year. As you get ready to go back to school, we want you to know that we are here for you and we are praying for you. All of our students and parents, school staff, and our teachers. One of the many puzzles we're working on right now is what ministry is gonna look like in the fall. Our family ministry team is busy putting all the pieces together and once it's ready, we'll get it to you through Facebook and email. Whether it's puzzles or board games or just watching a movie, we all need each other now more than ever. I hope you're taking some special moments together as a family. Good morning and welcome to this time of worship that recalls the style of worship many of us know from our sanctuary services. Now even though we are not meeting in person at this time, our ministry and mission still goes forward through our giving, our service, and our witness for Christ. Now that is the theme of our opening hymn, so I hope you will sing along with me wherever you may be. Wider grows the kingdom, reign of love and light. For it we must labor till our faith is sight. Prophets have proclaimed it, martyrs testified. Poets sung its glory. For it died forward through the ages in unbroken line. Move the faithful spirits at the call divine. Not a As a sign of our unity and love for one another, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, followed by that ancient hymn of faith, the Gloria Patri. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead and is sitting into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So, Pastor Kennan's sermon this morning is going to be based upon the scripture of the rich young ruler coming to Christ and saying, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus says, obey the commandments. And he says, I do that. And Jesus says, well, then there's just one thing left to do. Sell everything you own, give it to the poor, and follow me. So I think the sermon this morning is going to be about commitment. And I like to pray about commitment. So before we get ready to pray this morning... I'd like for you to take a comfortable seat, calm down a little bit, take a few steady breaths, turn your palms up in your lap, and get ready to hear what God has to say to you through this prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we commit our time, our talents, and our resources to you. Everything we have, has been given to us by you. So we offer these gifts back to you for your holy use. We pray that every good seed that we plant will yield a rich harvest of souls, righteousness and blessings, and will help people take the next step toward a Christ-centered life, a life that's committed to you. Lord Jesus, help us to grow in the awareness that you are really our sustenance. Help us to rest in your strength as we realize that we are weak in our flesh. We pray that we be solely and wholly committed to our walk with you. We pray that we may not turn away from the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We pray that our reliance on you may grow deeper today and our assurance in you grow wider. We pray that our faith in you grow stronger and our zeal for you grow greater. We pray that we may continue to rely upon your wisdom and will no longer lean on our own understanding. We pray that we will yield our instructions at all times and make you first in all that we do. Grant us grace, power, and strength to do your will for the rest of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. I'm glad to be with you. Thank you for joining us from home. As we continue in our Letters in Red series, we're going to be looking at a story from the Gospel of Matthew today. Now, Jesus had left Galilee and was on his way, inching ever so closer to the cross. Uh, And he, uh, in Judea, uh, uh, encounters this man uh, who he has an exchange with. And uh, we're going to look at this, but if you take time to look very carefully at this character that Jesus encounters, and we study the Bible, we come to know that it's found in three of the four Gospels, and that this man is a rich, young ruler. And he approaches Jesus with a question. I'm going to be reading from the NRSV in uh, Matthew 19, beginning in verse 16. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Now, just by the way that the character asked the question, this rich young ruler, it is really apparent that he already believes that there is something that he can do to earn his way into an eternal life with God. And and the authors of these Gospels have gone to great lengths for us to know that the guy has clearly got everything that he possibly could want. He's a rich, young ruler. So I want you to listen to how Jesus responds now. Why do you ask me about what's good? There is Only one who is good, and if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. So now Jesus is not questioning his own goodness here. This is some clever wordplay on Jesus' part, that this man should actually heed his words. Jesus is God, and Jesus is the one good. And he's saying, if you want eternal life, as you say you do, then keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, also you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now in short order, Jesus confirmed what the man probably already knew. He said to the man, follow the commandments, the law of Moses. And then with this kind of dismissive uh, attitude, the rich young ruler boasted, verse 20, I have kept all of these. What do I still lack? Now listen deeply to what Jesus responded because he gave this guy a reality check and a slice of humble pie. Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go. Sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And that, my friends, marked the end of their conversation. The passage ends with this insight. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this word. I pray, God, that it searches our hearts, Lord, and that, Lord, you will speak to each one of us deeply right where we are. I pray, God, that you will uh, give us special insight into our own lives, Lord, and that you will um, sit and and correct us, Lord, as our our Father, our loving parent, one who we can trust in because you are faithful and good. And I pray that in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Now, it really struck me this week as I read this passage and, and looked at this young, rich ruler that Jesus encountered, that he had so much going for him, that he had power, and that he had wealth, and he had youth, and and certainly he had uh, put some effort probably into arriving into that place. And if not, even if he was born into all of that, he certainly would have had to put some kind of effort into maintaining it all. His question to Jesus was asked in such a way to imply that perhaps he'd already impressed God enough to gain an eternal life with God. 
And I wonder if we ever do that. Uh, You know, if this man's impressive actions weren't enough, then he started to tick off the boxes about his own behavior. He hadn't murdered anyone, check. Uh, He hadn't committed adultery, check. He had honored his father and his mother, check. He'd been loving to his friends, check. Surely uh, that all satisfied the requirements to gain entry into an eternity, right? What could he possibly do that he hadn't already done? His, his question was more like, see what all I've done? Do you know who I am? What else could be required that I might be guaranteed my place of honor before God? I mean, I've done it all, right? Right? And then Jesus, in one brief sentence, offered a profound correction to this man's understanding of one's status in the eyes of God. In one brief sentence, Jesus flipped the man's knowledge of goodness and, more specifically, the goodness of God on its head. If you want to Give it all you've got. Go sell your possessions. Give everything you have to the poor. Take everything that is important to you. Take everything that you value as treasure, all that you've stored up here on earth. Take everything that you believe entitles you to an eternal life with God, every good deed that you've done, everything that you actually possess. Take everything that you use to identify yourself as important and worthy. And in a sacrificial act of ultimate love and ultimate goodness, give it and yourself away for the sake of those who have little to nothing. And then, then, then you will know heavenly treasure. And then you can come follow me. Then you can do what I do, is what Jesus is saying. Then you will have guaranteed your eternity. You will have done it all. But you see, the man couldn't. And he walked away. Because he knew his heart was set on an identity other than Jesus Christ. He wanted to be a rich, young ruler more than he wanted to be truly good in the sense that God would know as good, the ultimate good. His good earthly fortunes were a barrier to Jesus and the life that Christ had waiting for him. Now... (laughs) This is important because as a church whose spirit-breathed mission statement is meeting people where they are and helping them take their next step to Christ-centeredness, this is foundational to our understanding. And we must have this cemented in ourselves in order that we might move forward together in ministry. Our context here in 2020 is as one of the nations that is young on our planet. But it is also the richest and most powerful nation on our planet. We are clearly the young, rich rulers of this place and of our time. Therefore, we must allow this scripture and the Spirit of God to search us totally this morning. Money. Security. Power. We are, after all, a pretty organized, law abiding citizens. We are, after all, uh, largely in agreement on what it means to be a productive citizen and a good neighbor. But is all that going to stand us upright before Almighty God as worthy of God's promise for an eternal life with God? I mean, After all, most of us aren't out to hurt anyone, much less kill them. Most of us mind our manners. Most of us try to do and be good. But you see, Jesus, in his exchange with the rich young ruler, said, 
Not so fast. If you want to know true, ultimate good, if you want to know me, for I am the true, ultimate good, then listen to what I say, which is, yes, be a good Christian and follow the Ten Commandments. That is certainly part of the journey toward an eternity with God. But if you want to go all in, if you want to go all in, then abandon everything that you identify as important about yourself and replace it with me. Let go of your status. Let go of your entitlement. Let go of your rights. Let go of your perceived strengths. Even your nationalism. Instead of valuing who and what you are and do, value my word and be prepared to sacrifice yourself for it completely. Even to death. Then and only then will you truly know what it means to be good. And to have wealth and the reality of God's heavenly kingdom. You see, Jesus didn't want any barriers between the man and himself. Jesus is God and loved this man ever bit as much as he loves you and I. And friends, Jesus doesn't want any barriers between him and us either. The rich young ruler walked away because he was holding on tight to a lot of things. Money. Status power. And he was unwilling to let them go and go all in for the kingdom of God. The kingdoms of earth were a stronghold on him, and he'd rather have been a big fish in a small pond that would eventually dry up than a small fish in a big pond that was eternal. But you and I even from the position as the modern, young, rich rulers can make a different choice. We must make a different choice. We should not hold on to any self-indulgent, self-important notions about who we are at the expense of knowing the true goodness of God. The powers of darkness would lull us into holding on to ourselves how much we do, who we are, what we have. Nothing would please Satan more than for us to hold on to our identities and exalt ourselves as Americans or Republicans or Democrats or even as superior religious people while walking away from Jesus today, tomorrow, And the next day, and the next day, until there are no more days left, and we run out of time to make a better choice, the choice that Christ would have us make. But if we'll do what Jesus said here to the rich young ruler and put him first in all things and follow him, we will be rich in eternity no matter who we are or where we are from or what we have or whatever our perceived status is is or isn't here on this earth. And friends, that is good news because that is something that anyone on this planet can do right here where you are today. You see, this good news of these letters in red meet you right where you are. (laughs) What If we, friends, commit to being the church that when we're faced with the decision of whether to sacrifice all that we have here and now for what God has for us in eternity, what is possible if we're willing to sell off anything to meet people where they are and help people take their next step towards Christ to continue this God-breathed mission here at Broadmoor? And what if when faced with the decision We're the church that lifts others up in the love of God, even at our own great expense. And when we see that person or persons in eternal heavenly kingdom, how much richer will we all be? 
what if, what if we humbled ourselves before God this morning right where we are and admit that God is ultimate good and that this truth will create a new, deeper, more meaningful worship within us today. What if we give ourselves away and instead of holding to the barriers between us and true good, we let go and let God. God is the one who conceived the unconceivable. It was Jesus who hung on a cross. It was Jesus who knew no sin, but who became sin so that we might be rich in heaven. It was Jesus whose body was beaten and broken and who suffered. He is the one who gave his life. He is our truest friend. It was his ultimate act of perfect love that earned our freedom and eternity in the heavenly kingdom of God. Anything that is higher or more important to us than him must come down. We cannot afford to hold on to that and walk away. Storing it up here won't help us there. Allowing it to hold us back from God's eternal promises is not a good choice. Those strongholds in our lives must be broken so that we may follow the path to Christ-centeredness. We must admit that we are redeemed only because of what he did. Don't be deceived that we've earned it. That's not true. Friends, our treasures, they aren't here. <laughs> our treasures, truly good treasures, will be the souls in heaven that we all leveraged every earthly thing here to be with there. Imagine that. Imagine what it will be like when together we all fall down and lay the sweet souls of those we served as offerings, as true treasure at the feet of Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the words of this hymn serve as our response to the message we have just heard. Take my life and let it Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Every power as thou shalt choose. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I There are many ways that you can give toward the mission of Broadmoor. 
You can go to broadmoormethodist.org slash giving to give safely and securely online. You can text BE MORE to 73256. And of course, you can also mail checks to our physical address at 10230 Molly Lee Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70815.